Hi there, I'm Will, course specialist here at Career Foundry. Today I'm going to show you how to conduct user research analysis. This comes after you've done extensive user research, such as interviews, card sorting, questionnaires and surveys. No matter what research methods you used, the next step is to turn your raw data into valuable insights. What does the data mean? What does it tell you about the product you're designing and the people you're designing it for? How can you use the data you've gathered to inform the design process? To conduct user research analysis, you first need to organise all the data you've gathered. Then you'll start to define and categorise your data, identifying patterns and common themes. At the same time, you'll synthesise your findings, pulling out meaningful insights. Finally, you'll turn these insights into something concrete that can be shared with and understood by all key stakeholders. Now that all sounds quite complex, doesn't it? But don't worry, in this video, I'll break the whole process down step by step. By the end, you'll be ready to analyse, share and use your research findings. Are you ready? Let's go. The very first step of the analysis process is to gather all your research data and organise it in a way that's both logical and manageable. Ideally, you want all your research artefacts in one place. If you've got audio recordings, video clips or handwritten notes, you'll first need to transcribe them in a digital format. At the same time, think about how you'll organise your files. It can be useful to create a folder for each person you interviewed. If you do so, it's also a good idea to create a quick profile document for each user. This way, you can have the person in mind as you explore their research data. Once your digital space is organised, it's time to focus on your physical environment. Data analysis can be a complex and messy task, so you'll need a dedicated area to work in. Clear your desk, have a blank wall or whiteboard at the ready, and make sure all your research artefacts are within reach. With everything organised, you're almost ready to jump into the analysis itself. But before you do so, refer back to your research objectives. Why did you conduct user research in the first place? Did you want to develop empathy for your target users? Or did you want to find out if an existing product is meeting the user's needs? Your initial research objectives will guide your analysis, helping you pick out the information that is useful to you. Let's imagine you're designing a budgeting app for students. You want to understand who your target users are and what their motivations might be for using your app. So you've conducted several in-person interviews and online surveys. When analysing this research, you'll be looking for anything that tells you about the user, such as demographic data, information about their lifestyle, and quotes that might reveal how they feel about the product or the topic it relates to. The project dictates the process, so bear your research objectives in mind at all times. Step three is all about getting hands-on with the data. During this phase of analysis, you'll comb through all your research, looking for relevant themes, patterns, and stories. Remember, you're looking for anything that can help you with your original research objective. In order to make sense of your research, a good first step is to assign codes to the data. This is especially useful for structuring qualitative data, such as that collected in user interviews. Let's take a look at this method in more detail now. Let's say you're reading through the transcript of a user interview. Every time the user says something interesting, you can highlight it and assign a corresponding code. It's important to note that the code is just a description of what's being said. It is not an interpretation. Let's demonstrate this method with a simple example. Imagine you're designing a dating app. You're interested in finding out what kinds of dating services your audience has used in the past, how often they use dating services, and how they feel about them in general. What codes might you come up with for the following interview snippet? I'm not a fan of online dating. I have a Tinder account, but I only log in every couple of weeks. I haven't tried any other dating services. I just don't think they will work for me. Some useful codes might be dating app, negative emotion, and time frame. Can you see how you're effectively labeling different elements of what the user has said? If you're working with a printed transcript, you can simply write the codes next to the relevant text. Your codes don't need to be highly sophisticated, and it's perfectly okay to end up with lots of different codes. Once you have coded all your data, so, in this case, all of your interview transcripts, what you'll have in front of you is a rather messy collection of different codes. Now you'll start to group similar codes together into broader categories or themes.
While codes serve to highlight interesting information, themes require you to actively interpret the data. For example, the codes dating app, online dating, and speed dating could all be grouped under the overarching theme, dating services. Bear in mind that splitting your data into themes is a highly iterative process. Be prepared to go back and forth between your data, your codes, and the emerging themes. At this stage, I recommend writing all your codes and themes onto sticky notes, which can easily be moved around. This is where your big blank wall will come in handy. Another useful technique for grouping and understanding your data is affinity mapping. First, you'll go through all your research, pulling out quotes and observations of interest, much like the coding exercise from before. You'll write each point on a separate sticky note, then you'll pick one sticky note as your starting point. Place your chosen sticky note on the blank wall or whiteboard. Next, you'll find similar notes and stick them around the first, creating a cluster of post-its that all share a particular theme. Once you feel that the cluster is complete, stick a label beneath it as a reminder of why these notes are clustered together. Repeat the process with new clusters and themes until you're sure you've exhausted all avenues. Feel free to duplicate your sticky notes if they could belong to more than one cluster. You'll end up with an entire wall or whiteboard filled with sticky notes and, most importantly, themes that can be used to draw meaningful insights from your data. In the previous step, you spent time exploring and organizing your data. This step, step four, is all about synthesizing your data. Synthesis can be defined as the process of creating spontaneous concepts and ideas based on facts you're analyzing. Before I show you how to synthesize your data, let's first define the difference between findings and insights. When discussing user research, these terms are often used interchangeably. However, they're not the same thing. A finding is a fact or statement that simply tells us what is happening. It doesn't tell us why or provide us with a meaningful solution. An insight, on the other hand, describes an aspect of human behavior or user motivation. It enables us to see how we might go about solving a particular user problem. Now let's go back to our budgeting app example. One finding might be that users tend to use a mixture of different apps at the same time to track their budget. Now from this finding, you might deduce the following insight. There is currently no all-in-one solution for budgeting, so users need to rely on multiple apps. Can you see how the insight hints at the possible solution? Based on that insight, you might decide to design a one-stop shop budgeting app for your target users. Now we're clear on the difference between these two key terms, it's time to start drawing meaningful insights from your user research data. Remember the clusters and themes you came up with in step three? You're now going to comb through them and pull out findings that can be turned into insights. Start with the themes you consider to be high priority, depending on your research objectives. So, if your goal is to find out more about your target users, you'll prioritize those themes that hold key user insights. How you organize your themes, findings, and insights is up to you, but sticky notes and a blank wall or whiteboard is a great place to start. As you synthesize each of your themes, you should start to see a range of useful insights emerging. When you're ready, create a document listing all the insights you've gleaned from your research. This is key preparation for the fifth and final step in the process. The final step in the analysis phase is to share your insights with your team and turn them into something actionable. In the previous step, you listed all your insights in one document. Now it's time to bring all key stakeholders together to discuss your insights as a group. It's important to make sure that everyone on your team understands what you've learned through conducting user research. Having shared your insights with your team, you'll then turn them into something useful. Often, your research insights will become your problem statement, the user problem that you will aim to solve. You might also turn your insights into how might we questions. This rephrases the problem, turning it into a design opportunity. Let's try this with our example insight from step four. The insight, there is currently no all-in-one solution for budgeting, so users need to rely on multiple apps could be rephrased as follows. How might we enable users to satisfy all their budgeting needs in one place? Now you're starting to consider your research insights in terms of a concrete user problem and, eventually, a solution. Ultimately, the insights you uncover through user research and subsequent analysis will guide the next steps in your design process, showing you what you need to focus on and why. So there you have it, the research analysis process broken down to five simple steps. You've now turned your research findings into meaningful insights that can be used to make smart decisions about the product you're designing. 
Great work. If you'd like to learn more about UX research, head on over to the Career Foundry blog or browse our YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you.